Hello and welcome to this fifth tutorial video on how to make a button jointed ragdoll. In this tutorial video we're going to be button jointing the head and we're also going to be looking at ways of adapting the joint if your button is too small. I've cut four lengths of my stranded cotton to 30 centimeters and I'm taking two of those and passing them through a hole in my button. And then I'm going to pass the other end through the opposite hole. Now if your button only has two holes, just pass all four threads through the same two holes. Let's do the other one. So that's, this is two of the strands through the first hole and then two of the strands through the opposite hole. And with the two we've already done, that's going to give us a crisscross. And having four strands like this means that if any of them ever break, there's a crisscross, you've got plenty to keep the head secure. My head gusset is actually 4.5 centimetres, whereas my button is only 4 centimetres or just over 4 centimetres. So I'm going to use this hardboard disc to make the difference up between my button and my head gusset, otherwise the edges of the neck and the head will curve more than I want them to. I want a nice flat join. And the way to do that is to pass, using a darning needle like that, the ends of the thread through the hole in the hardboard disc. Now the first one will go through easily, but the others are more awkward, so I'm going to use that darning needle and speed this up and pop those through. So you can possibly even recycle something. I like hardboard discs because they are relatively thin and relatively strong. But if you're not washing your doll, thick cardboard will do, or maybe cut a, a jar lid, plastic jar lid to size. So I'll pass that last one through. That's all, all of the ends through. And then just take a little bit of time to straighten up these end bits, just pull them level. Now we're going to insert the button joint into the head through the hole at the back, coming out here. So I've marked that position, which is going to be our thread hole, and I'm just popping my darning needle in and just expanding that hole a little bit by jiggling it about just to loosen the weave so that it's easier to find. So you just pop that through there, jiggle it about. This won't break the threads or make it or make it run or anything. It just makes it much easier to see where that hole is. And we want to pass all of our threads through that same hole if we can. And we've got quite a few threads here to get through. So again, the darning needle comes in very useful. I can pop two threads at a time through mine. And getting them all through the same hole means that the neck turns nice and smoothly. So going in through the hole at the back of the head and out through that hole in the neck gusset. And we want to do that with all of these threads through the same hole. So I'll just show you another one of those. The thread into the doll needle pass it through the hole in the back of the head and through the neck gusset from the inside to the outside. So find that hole, try and get it through exactly the same hole and pull it tight. We don't do it too tight at the moment otherwise it's going to pull that head joint right up against the inside and you're not going to be able to get the rest through. This is why we've got such long threads. We need enough room to manoeuvre with. So thread through the eye of the darning needle. And then through the back of the head, hole in the back of the head, finding that hole in the neck gusset, 
and I'm pulling my threads to one side a little bit so that I can get them all through the same hole without catching the threads that are already in position. I've caught the threads there and you don't want to catch the threads otherwise you're not going to be able to pull them all tight. So pull it through, there we go, and the last couple of threads there. Of course you don't have to use a darning needle, you can use any needle with a, a fair size hole in it. I'm just being lazy because I want to be able to put at least two threads through at a time. There we go, and through the hole in the back of the head, find a mark on the neck gusset where your threads are going through. Pull them off to one side and pass it through the same hole. And that's all of them through. Now you can pass the joint into the head. So the hardboard disc here is closest to the fabric because it's the most accurate fit. It's exactly the right size. And when you get that through into the head, you want to ease it right into the neck joint there, that neck gusset. And I take a little bit of time to make sure the seams aren't tucked underneath it. The seams of the neck gusset are sitting around the outside because that makes for a nice, neat fit. And that's all done. That concludes our tutorial video. I hope it's been helpful. If it has, please subscribe. We'd love your feedback and a like. There are more videos coming soon.